Howdy. My name is Nonat, and I shaved my facial hair so I look like a sad, tired teenager. But today is a very special day because with the class deep dives done and out of the way, until kineticist, I gotta get a new kind of deep dive to fill that void. Something I can just talk about for 20 to 30 minutes at a time straight out of the book to barf my word choice to re-explain. That's a terrible explanation of these to verbalize my explanations of existing content for you, because that's kind of what I do on this channel. This is a super ridiculously stupid and roundabout way of saying welcome to the Ratfolk Deep Dive for Pathfinder 2nd Edition. I haven't done one of these since Skeleton, and before that, it's been months since we've been <laughs> handling... I can't even talk. It's been months since we've handled a main line ancestry. We haven't even finished the APG ancestries yet, y'all. There are a solid 20 or so ancestries I've yet to cover. So let's go ahead and stop wasting your time and get into it. The rat folk are actually known in universe as Yasoki. So I'm actually going to refer to them as Yasoki for the rest of this video because I think it just sounds cooler. Yasoki are an uncommon ancestry. They are small and frail little mice people. They only start with six hit points. They are, as I said, small in size and have a 25 movement speed. Their ability boosts are to dexterity, intelligence, and a free boost of their choice, but because of their frail frame, they do take a penalty to strength. They are also one of those poor ancestries who don't start with dark vision, only getting low light vision. So that's a bit unfortunate. And of course, there's a heritage, the deep rat, that just gives you dark vision. The desert rat, however, is a really creative heritage and sort of breaks the mold for the elemental heritages like a lot of ancestries seem to get. The Desert Rat does protect you from heat, treating extreme heat environments as one step lower, but unless you have shelter, you actually treat cold environments as one step worse, which you don't usually see in these. Additionally, I think this is rad, if you drop to all fours, your movement speed increases to 30 feet, so you can't be holding anything, but for something like a Desert Rat Monk, that would be awesome. Also, you get hungry and thirsty ten times slower than other characters. That's kind of underrated for how useful that can be. The Long Snout Rat gets a 30-foot imprecise smell sense, and if something is in range of their smell, which is that 30 feet, they actually get a plus two to perception checks to seek it. The Sewer Rat is your classic poison-resistant heritage, allowing you to reduce the stage of poison by two on a successful save instead of one, up to three on a crit success, and reducing virulent poisons by two on a crit success. It even allows you to reduce a virulent poison stage by one stage on a normal success, which is usually impossible. And the Shadow Rat is downright hilarious. You gain trained proficiency in intimidation, and you can intimidate animals to coerce them without taking a penalty. You're just really good at intimidating animals. The downside is every single animal you meet forever starts with their attitude one degree lower than they would have been. So if they would have been unhelpful, they go straight to hostile when they see you. Over in the Lost Omens Ancestry Guide, we have the Snow Rat, which is sadly really boring compared to the Desert Rat. You just treat cold environments as one stage less severe, and you get cold resistance equal to half your level. Eh. And the final heritage is the Tunnel Rat, which gets you the Quick Squeeze skill feat even if you're not trained in acrobatics, and if something is tight enough that you need to squeeze into it, but not so tight that you need to take the squeeze action, it's not difficult terrain. Why did that whole sentence sound suggestive? Alright, you know what time it is. It's the bread and butter ancestry feat, starting with just the absolute banger that is cheek pouches. You can store up to four items of light bulk or less. And the cheeks. And you can just use them. You take them out of your mouth when you need them for one action. Now, it's important to note, none of these can be more than a foot long in any direction. So even if a weapon or something is light bulk, if it's like three feet long, you can't store it in your mouth. Again, this feels really dirty. 
If you have anything in your mouth, your speech is really hard to understand, but for one action, you can just puke out all four items out of your mouth on the floor at the same time. I'm glad we're done talking about this feat. <laughs> Pack Rat is an adorable feat, allowing you to fit 50% more bulk into a container. Say a box or a chest can only hold four bulk worth of items. Because you're a pack rat and really good at Tetris, now it can hold six bulk. Though it's important to note this does not work on extra dimensional storage like a bag of holding. Rat familiar. Yo dog, we heard you liked rats, so you're playing a rat and we gave your rat a rat so you can talk to your rat as your rat. It's pretty rad. Rat Folklore, it's your classic lore skill, you get acrobatics, stealth, and rat folklore. Rat Speak, you don't speak the language of rodents, but you can use diplomacy to make an impression on other rodents, like porcupines, beavers, mice, rats, and other things that I'm reading off of this list. It's almost interesting that it doesn't say you speak their language, but it says you can ask questions and receive answers from. So it doesn't say you can hold a conversation, but it does say, I guess you can ask, where did the halfling go? And the mouse can go, <coughs> and you can go, thanks, Chad. Tinkering fingers, you no longer need a repair kit to use crafting to repair an item. However, if you don't have the kit, you do take a minus two penalty. Overall, not bad at all. At higher levels, that minus two is not going to mean much when it comes to repairing mundane or even semi-magical equipment, so this is a fantastic feat. Vicious Incisors. You get a 1d6 damage finesse unarmed strike. It's just unfortunate that it's not agile, but it's still pretty good. Though I don't think any Jaws strike in the entire game is ever agile. Hilariously, this is one of the only physical trait feats you can retrain out of or take later, because it's assumed that most rat folk, like real-life rodents, are constantly using their teeth and filing them down. Vicious incisors just means you've chosen to stop filing down your teeth and attack people with it. And if you ever retrain out of this feat, it just means you've started filing them down again by chewing on wood and junk. Warren Navigator. If you're going to be in a wilderness campaign, this feat is amazing. You become trained in survival. When you roll to sense direction or roll against the freaking maze spell, you treat your saving throw as one step higher than you rolled, and you don't take a penalty if you don't have a compass. This is great. If you're in the middle of the woods, a Warren Navigator Ratfolk will save your life. Assuming, you know, you don't have a druid or primal caster who can cast no direction. Over in the Ancestry Guide, we have a jump scare. Bleh! This is Skull Creeper. It grants you trained proficiency in intimidation and the intimidating glare skill feat. Additionally, you can spend 50 gold at some point to get a splendid skull, giving you a plus one item bonus to intimidation. Warren Friend brings out your inner Skaven because the Skaven are everywhere. Yes, yes. By spending one day of downtime, you automatically learn where the closest rat folk settlement is, and if you make your way there, you get a plus one to gather information and earn income in that settlement. Lab Rat, you get a plus one circumstance bonus to saving throws against poisons and harmful elixir effects, and if you succeed against these effects, you auto crit succeed instead. Combine this with the Sewer Rat Heritage, and you're just so immune to poison. Like, that's honestly insane. This means if you roll a success against a poison, you reduce its stage by three. You reduce a virulent poison by two. A lab rat, sewer rat, Yasoki is just unpoisonable. Quick stow. You need to have cheek pouches as a prerequisite, but once per round as a free action, you can just store something on your cheek. Huh. Don't eat dice. Rat magic. You can cast Animal Messenger once per day, but the animal that shows up is always a rat. Animal Messenger is effectively, you tie a little note to something and they magically know where it needs to go, and as long as they can get there within 24 hours, they will deliver that message and the spell does not wear off either, again, until 24 hours or somebody takes the message from them. 
Cornered Fury is really interesting. If a creature critically hits you and deals damage, and they are at least medium or bigger, or at least bigger than you, they're flat-footed for one round. Kinda cool. Really useful if you're something like a Yasoki Rogue. You take a critical hit, but if you lived, now you get free sneak attacks on that target. Gnaw is amazing. You do need the Vicious Incisor feat, but for three actions, if you attack an unattended object, you deal double damage. This is actually way better than it sounds, because objects have inherent hardness. You know, wood reduces all damage by five or something like that, so 1d6 plus strength might not be enough to get past that hardness, but 2d6 plus double strength really is not as affected by that five damage reduction. Plague Sniffer. You do need to be a long snout rat as a prerequisite, but if you take this feat, you can now smell diseases on people. You don't even need to roll for it unless it's a particularly subtle disease. You don't get to know what disease it is, but you can sniff somebody and go, ooh, no, go quarantine for roughly two weeks. Ratfolk roll. For two actions, you curl up into a ball and move at four times your speed only on a downhill incline. If at the start of your next turn you are still on the incline, you keep going, but you are slowed too. And if you happen to run into somebody on the first turn, you just come to a rolling stop safely. Or if you run into somebody on the second turn or beyond of rolling, you and the target both take 4d6 bludgeoning damage. Also, you do stop rolling if you reach the bottom of the hill. Big Mouth! You can now store up to one bulk worth of items instead of only four light items. They still can't be more than one foot in any dimension, but you can store some more interesting things in your mouth. Overcrowd. As long as you are still small or smaller, you can share a space with another small creature. So two rat folk could share a space on the battlefield, taking up less room. Rat form, I just can't recommend. For one action, you can use pest form to turn into a rat. I suppose there's no duration and it doesn't have a once per day kind of thing. So I guess this should be level 9. If you can now turn into a small rat at will and turn back at will. So, alright, you know what? That does get a pass for me. That's pretty good. Uncanny Cheeks. On top of being a great feat name, I want to hear somebody's story on how Uncanny Cheeks saved their life. Because with Uncanny Cheeks, it works just like Prescient Consumable and Prescient Planner. In fact, you get both of those feats for free, but when you pull an item out using one of those feats, it comes out of your mouth. Like, I'm bleeding to death. Oh, go oh wait, wait. Oh, that's right, I did have an elixir of life. I don't know why I didn't just bite it when it was already in my mouth, but I have it. Warren Digger has to be one of the saddest 13th level feats. Maybe, I don't know, it feels really weak. At level 13, you get a 15-foot burrow speed. That's it. I mean, burrow speeds aren't common, and as long as you're not on, like, solid hard stone or something, it would be really hard to chase you. You know, if you burrow down 45 feet on your turn, chances are something can't really reach you. <laughs> that's, that seems really weak for level 13. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Am I wrong or is that kind of just disappointing? Shin Stabber, a direct upgrade to Overcrowd, you can now share a space with a medium creature, not just a small one. It does need to be an ally, though. You can't share a space with an enemy. Skittering Sneak just has to be the single strongest of the 13th level Rat Folk feat. When sneaking, you move your full movement speed instead of half. Like, what would you rather have? You can share a space with a medium ally, you can burrow at 15 feet, or you can sneak at full speed. That just sounds so much more useful. And finally, at level 17, they get Rat Folk Growth, which functions like a 6th level enlarge spell once per day. That means both you and up to nine other creatures grow huge in size with a plus four status bonus to damage. And don't forget the reach that comes along with that size.
And that is the Yosoki, also known as Rat Folk Ancestry for Pathfinder 2E. I love these guys. They're adorable. They're fuzzy. They're super cute. And I just want to die. I've been meaning to play a Rat Folk for years now. I've theorycrafted a few of them, but I've never quite gotten the chance to play them. Let me know down in the comments if you've had a chance to play them yourself. Because that's it for me. I want to give a huge shout out to my patrons and YouTube members for keeping the channel alive and supporting me financially. If you would like to join them as well, click the link in the, not in the description. Oh my god, there's a join button below the video. I've been doing this for like three months now. How am I still not getting it right? That's all for me. I'll see y'all soon for another Ancestry Guide within the next two years. I hope y'all have a wonderful rest of your day. And until next time, no not once.